On Central tonight, rioting on the streets. The disturbances that have engulfed large parts of London spread to the Midlands. Tonight, police are out in force to protect people and property from further unrest. Welcome to this special edition of Central Tonight. Good evening. For the second night running, rioting has broken out in the Midlands. These are the latest scenes from West Bromwich. Vehicles have been set on fire and police in riot gear have cordoned off part of the centre. Just as we were about to come on air, this is what happened here in the centre of Birmingham. There was a group of youths and they threw missiles as they ran past us. The trouble began in Birmingham 24 hours ago as youth smashed shop windows and looted stores. In nearby Handsworth, terrified residents watched helplessly as gangs roamed the streets, setting fire to cars and attacking property. And in Nottingham, trouble flared in St Anne's when police were targeted. This afternoon, many city centre stores throughout the Midlands closed early and boarded up their windows. Anxious workers were told to go home early. Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg visited Birmingham to see the extent of the wanton damage. And earlier, the Prime Minister, David Cameron, took the unusual step of recalling Parliament to discuss the crisis. Well, in this special programme, we have several reports. In the first, Becky Johnson looks at yesterday's events and a night of looting. Intent on destruction and theft. Groups of teenagers took over the city centre. As they smashed their way into shops, it became a free-for-all. The rioters stealing whatever they could get their hands on. As the police arrived to clear the area, the mobs simply moved on. At this mobile phone shop, dozens of people had broken in and were helping themselves. As we tried to report on what was happening, we were targeted by thugs. People are now taking phones. Oh, excuse me. Across the city, a trail of indiscriminate destruction. There was no political agenda to these riots. This the work of opportunist criminals. Can we ask you to move away? Can we start moving, please? Can we start moving, please? That way, if anything gets thrown at you, you're not going to be alert. Despite the efforts of riot police, the trouble continued late into the night. Some of those involved were so young, many are asking where were their parents? As the hours wore on, it spread to Handsworth. Cars and an unmanned police station were set on fire. The riots here and three nights of trouble in London prompted the Prime Minister to cut his summer holiday short. These are sickening scenes. Scenes of people looting, vandalising, thieving, robbing. Scenes of people attacking police officers and even attacking fire crews as they're trying to put out fires. This is criminality, pure and simple, and it has to be confronted and defeated. But how best to confront hundreds of people with no regard for law and order remains the key question this evening. Becky Johnson for Central Tonight. Joins us now. Becky joins us now live, and uh, you were in the city centre last night. How frightening was it for people? Well, Bob, the answer is it was incredibly frightening. You have to remember there were hundreds of rioters out on the streets and there simply weren't enough police to keep up with them all. So what you had is a situation where the rioters were moving around in mobs of around 20 or 30. They were smashing up shops, as you saw in my report. And then the police were essentially playing catch-up, but by the time they caught up with, with that incident, there'd be another one further down. And there were literally whole areas of the city where the rioters were able to just walk around and there wasn't a police officer in sight. Now, as you saw in my 
my report, they were really quite intimidating towards us. For obvious reasons, they weren't happy that the press were there filming what they were doing. And it, and it was quite frightening, to tell you the truth. And you have to remember, this all started at around this time yesterday evening, which is a busy time in the city centre. People are at work, the shop is out, and the mobs are moving around with, frankly, absolutely no regard for people's safety whatsoever. Thank you. Thank you. So, after a night of looting in Birmingham, staff returned to work today to find their stores smashed and damaged with little left to sell. The clean-up operation has begun, but the loss for some is huge. Victoria Davis reports now on the businesses counting the cost. Scenes of devastation and destruction greeted workers this morning in Birmingham city centre. Many staff had deserted their stores last night, fleeing from gangs of looters. Today, businesses were left to pick up the pieces. The security and the mailbox were completely overrun, and they've got them with a big concrete slab and, and, and then just run, run amok in the, in the shop, basically. So it's, it's absolutely devastating. I can't, I can't say how, how upset I am. You know, It's going to take a long time to get it back together. Periodically, gangs are used to coming in, just taking stuff willy-nilly. Uh, you know, no power in my hands to actually stop them, so, you know, it was, it was very unnerving. Businesses have described it as organised chaos, where stores selling electrical equipment and designer goods were targeted. There was stock strewn all outside the store, um, came into the store and it was just carnage everywhere. Things had just been thrown around, smashed. It's not even just theft, I don't think, it's just half of it's just vandalism, just smashing things to pieces. This camera store was raided twice last night. Staff say that looters forced the shutters open and around 50 or 60 people poured inside, grabbing what they could. While many staff fled for their own safety, others barricaded themselves in. We've got a ladder and it's just barricade ourselves, basically pushing the door against so they're trying to kick in. They tried numerous times, literally kicking through. So it's really worried they're going to get through there. But literally they've got the ladders and basically held it down. This afternoon, the jewellery quarter in Birmingham was turned into a ghost town. Police told businesses to close as they feared there could be more unrest. Police have said it's best to be safe than sorry and uh, leave as soon as you are capable of leaving. But because we've been burgled yesterday, we're trying to um, rectify the premises and secure the premises. The cost for businesses will be huge. Many city centre stores stayed shut as they had nothing left to sell. Others sent their staff home early as a precaution. But as the clean-up continues, the fear is it could happen again. Victoria Davis in Birmingham for Central Tonight. Well, the violence wasn't only centred around Birmingham city centre. People in Handsworth, the scene of riots six years ago, said they were frightened for their lives after a night of chaos and destruction. Brigitte Popat now reflects on the residents who are now focusing their efforts on rebuilding the community. Residents in Handsworth said their neighbourhood resembled a war zone last night. Most of the trouble was on the Soho Road, usually a vibrant shopping area. This is what residents woke up to after a night of rioting. This jewellery shop was ransacked. Kuldeep Gogner, the owner, is devastated. It's really traumatic for me. I wish I could get a gun for myself and shoot these people. This is shocking for, for my whole, whole of my family at the moment. The trouble started just after 10 p.m. A local police station was also targeted. Residents and businessmen told me that when their area came under attack last night, they felt helpless and they couldn't believe how quickly shops were looted and cars were set alight. I'd say the average age was about 15 or 16 years of age, boys and girls. Uh, so that was a scary thing. We've got to ask as a local community, why are parents allowing these kids to get out late in the evening? It was a bit like Libya, like you, know, like you see on the television. It was, uh, it was very frightening, honestly. And what's going to be happened to the people who have been arrested? Either they're going to be punished or not. Either they're going to name and shamed in the community or not. Do you feel that there's any um, kind of tension here at all? Or do you, do you want... not, not really, not in Handsworth. It's quite a, a, a tight community, really. What do you think these riots are down to? Any idea? I, I think it's the jobs. Because mainly, I think, personally, and everyone talking, it's all, it's all about jobs.
Khalid Mahmood, the MP for Peribar, believes the rioters were simply copying what started in London four days ago. What about the police response? Was that good enough? I think there were issues with, with policing. Uh, certainly on this Soho Road here, uh, people were still driving up and down till about 12.30 a.m. Uh, in the morning. For many residents, the violence brought back memories of riots that have taken place here over the last 30 years. I was here in 1981 when all this place burned. All right, we see it in 1985 again and it burned. And we were told the government, we sat with council community leaders, we marched down there, we talked, we haven't seen a change. And what I'm saying to you, right, people are very unhappy. Community leaders are now appealing for calm. Rajiv Poppert in Handsworth for Central Tonight. Well, there was trouble in other parts of the Midlands too. Phil Brewster reports now on how the police and a community in Nottingham came under attack. The violence began around 11.30 last night. A gang of up to 30 youths went on the rampage in the St Anne's area of Nottingham. Within minutes, dozens of cars had their windscreens smashed as the rioters went on a wrecking spree. Local residents say it was total chaos. I went up in the window and I was looking at it and next minute they jumped on my car and then smashed the window as well. Several homes were in the firing line too as concrete missiles were hurled at windows. One woman who didn't want to appear on camera said it was terrifying. You know, they were just throwing rocks and they had um, poles in the hands and all sorts, shouting, swearing. Someone else who had a narrow escape was Leon Sissons. The youngster had just got out of his bed when a rock came hurtling through the window, showering the room with glass. His father says that just before the attack, they'd heard the rioters nearby. Up at the top of the road, there was three cars broke into, all the windows smashed, and they tried to set, actually set them on fire. Uh, they've got the burn marks inside and all you could hear is them shouting is uh, let them break off, let it roll, let it roll. It's a horrible feeling to be honest with you and as I say it's just gutting because there's nothing you can do about it. It's, it's just thuggish. Not long after a local police station was attacked as petrol bombs were thrown into the car park. A group also tried to break into the Victoria shopping centre and the JD sports shop inside but were chased off by police. It's disgusting. Those criminals are currently being sought by Nottinghamshire's finest and we will find them and put them before the courts. This morning, the leader of Nottingham City Council, John Collins, met with some of those affected by the violence and spoke of his contempt for the rioters. Anybody who's thinking that this is the kind of uh, copycat behaviour they want to get involved in, they need to know that um, the police will be uh, out in force and uh, you know people will get caught and punished. So far, a 20-year-old man and a 16-year-old boy have been arrested on suspicion of violent disorder and conspiracy to incite violence. More arrests are expected as police examine CCTV footage. The force is also monitoring social networking sites such as Twitter and Facebook to see if further trouble is being organised. Despite the rioting, tonight's Carling Cup match between Nottingham Forest and Notts County will go ahead. But the mounted section and dog unit will also be out on patrol. The force's helicopter will also be deployed. In the meantime, residents and businesses are being advised to carry on as before, but remain vigilant. But not surprisingly, the fear for many is that more trouble may be on the way. Phil Brewster in Nottingham for Central Tonight. Well, we're joined now by Derek Campbell, who's a government advisor on youth crime. Uh, Derek, what's behind this trouble that we're seeing now in the Midlands? I think if we look at it in the reality of the, uh, of the cold light of day, this is opportunism. We've seen criminals marauding around, taking advantage of the situation, and it's simple opportunism. Derek, we've also seen more youth, obviously, uh, marauding the streets tonight. We can hear the police helicopters there, obviously, not taking any chances. You've been to a meeting with the community. What do they say? I've just come from a meeting with representatives of the community, and they are quite angry with the fact that their livelihoods, their businesses, their, their, their personal safety has been put at risk. They're very concerned at the level of police that they saw yesterday. They are sending out a very clear message to those would-be criminals that they don't want you in our neighbourhood. And they're also saying to the police, please step up to the plate and ensure that we are protected. Well, I was going to say, any ideas really on how to tackle the problem? I think we've, I, I called for a curfew today and I, I sent a message to the Chief Constable and the Chair of the Police Authority and I was very adamant in my statement that we need to ensure that those people who would be making trouble are off the streets. We want to see sufficient numbers of policing on the street and we want to make sure that a clear message is sent to those criminals that they cannot do what they want, they have to abide by the law and we want families to also get involved 
send a message to your children to come home and stay home. Now, what about this idea that uh, the politicians are certainly saying it, the police are saying that you should get your children back indoors, tell us, you know, make sure you know where they are. Is there a real sense then within the community that they don't know where the young people are? Yeah, we've seen over the years that many families have sort of lost interest in bringing their own children simply because of the sort of liberal policies that are out there. They've disempowered the family, they've given far too much power to the children. And now to try and put the genie back into the bottle is going to be a very difficult job. But what we are urging, Families, mothers, fathers, feel empowered. You have got support that's coming down the line. The police are taking firm action. We're talking to the politicians. Make policies that help the family take control of their children. And I think if we can start that journey, it will lead us to a better place than where we are now. Very quickly, if you do have a curfew, how would you enforce it? I think we need to put more police on the streets. I think we need to make the police feel assured that they can take robust but proportionate action. And I think it's simply about getting the numbers on the street, taking the appropriate action, and I think that will bring, us, bring about the change that we need. Eric Campbell, thanks for joining us tonight. Let's hope it is a peaceful night. Ah, well, the people involved in last night's trouble have been labelled opportunist criminals, as Derek was saying, but the failure to stop the distraction has resulted in criticism of police tactics. Some now want the army brought onto the streets, but as Andy Bevan reports, others want a tougher police response. This was not an angry crowd. This was a greedy crowd. Um, what we were dealing with was dishonesty and disorder. A seething chief constable during a news conference the morning after the night before. Chris Sims, the most senior policeman in the West Midlands force, admitted the 800 or so rioters outnumbered his 400 officers on duty last night by two to one. 133 arrests have so far been made, many of them teenagers, boys and girls. But there have also been many reports of police standing by while looters ransacked shops. There's a perception around the town today that the police lost control of the streets. I, that hasn't come to me. Um, officers had to be deployed across a, a wide area and make arrests as quickly as they can. And I think people appreciate that by uh, taking 133 people off the streets as we did and by continuing to arrest people this morning, um, we are delivering the sort of protection that they want. Others, though, argue the police need more powers. Despite a rejection today by Home Secretary Theresa May, Newark MP and former Army Colonel Patrick Mercer says they should bring in water cannon, often deployed during flare-ups in Northern Ireland. They should certainly be made available to them. The police need to know how to use them, and if police are short of numbers, in these difficult circumstances, Things like water can and armoured vehicles, maybe even rubber bullets, can compensate for that. And earlier today, the Met's Deputy Commissioner admitted that plastic bullets have been considered as one of the tactics available to quell the unrest in London. Tonight, West Midlands officers will work 12-hour shifts instead of eight. There will be many more of them, including some from neighbouring forces. And CCTV images of any troublemakers will join those already on the police website. This isn't a game. Uh... We saw people laughing and joking, thinking perhaps that they were indulging in some community activity. But this is absolutely serious, we're serious, and we're going to protect Birmingham and the West Midlands. Well, there is a feeling that more activity is beginning on the streets tonight. And as you can hear, the police helicopter is right above us, keeping an eye on what's going on in the city centre. We've certainly got an increased presence of police who seem to be dressed in riot gear. Yeah. Now, you've been having your say on all this. We'll have a selection of your comments uh, later in the programme. That and a look at the day's sports news is still to come. Now, as we mentioned earlier, Nick Clegg has been in Birmingham to look at the extent of the destruction. His visit came on the day Prime Minister David Cameron announced he was recalling Parliament to debate this crisis. We'll go live now to our political reporter, Ben Earlham, at Westminster now. Ben, how significant is this recall of Parliament? 
Well, we're in the middle of what should be a seven-week-long summer recess here in Westminster, but uh, David Cameron announced this morning that Parliament would be recalled. It means that MPs from across the region will come back here on Thursday at 11.30 in the morning. They'll uh, hear an emergency, emergency statement from David Cameron. They'll then have a discussion in the House of Commons. How significant is this? Well, Parliament has only been recalled 24 times in the last 63 years, so very significant. On the list of reasons why Parliament has been recalled, that list also includes discussions over the Falkland Islands in 1982, the 9-11 terrorist attack on the United States in 2001, and the evasion of Kuwait in 1990. So very significant developments here, and it shows just how seriously this is all being taken. Ben, thanks for that. Time for a look now at the rest of the day's news and sport with Steve, who's back in the studio. Bob, Sam, thank you very much. Unions fighting to save 1,400 jobs at Derby-based train maker Bombardier have been on a morale-boosting visit to the plant today. Unite say they wanted to reach out to every worker to remind them that the fight to save their jobs is far from over. It comes after the government awarded a £1.4 billion train contract to German firm Siemens. We were telling the workforce to be strong, keep their campaigning going. The community of Derby and indeed the country are on their side. They know that it's the economics of the madhouse, throwing thousands of people to the dole, losing 150 years of skilled trades and creating no jobs for the kids of tomorrow in manufacturing. We're not defeated, we're not going away and we're determined to change this quite despicable decision around. A soldier from Stoke-on-Trent who died after being shot in Afghanistan continued to transmit radio messages even after he was hit, an inquest has hurt. Gunner Zach Kusak was shot in the stomach while on patrol in Helmand province last year. He died later from his injuries. He was 20 years old. An inquest heard that he managed to relay the message that his patrol had been attacked before losing consciousness. Well, on to uh, sports news now. And England's football friendly with Holland tomorrow has been cancelled because of the trouble in London. But England cricket captain Andrew Strauss has said he does expect the third test with India to take place as planned. The match is due to start at Edgebaston tomorrow, but had been cast in doubt following the riots in Birmingham, which saw the teams confined to their hotels last night. England looked relaxed and confident as they took part in a final day's practice before the third test with India. Quite a different scene to last night when violence erupted in Birmingham and the team were told to stay in their hotel. Well, it's just sad to watch your television and, and, and see you know, um, such kind of looting going on in your own country. Um, I think we're all very saddened by it and hope that it stops sooner rather than later. England's cricket team famously played on in Mumbai after terror attacks devastated the city. But India's captain insisted any decision by his side to play on in Birmingham will not be based on returning any favours. Uh, we are cricketers, we are uh, not uh, professional guys who know about security a lot, so let's leave the job to them. You know, they will be the person who will decide as to what needs to be done. And as cricketers, you know, we get ready for the next game and I feel that's what is important for us. As for the game, a draw or a win would be enough for England to win the four-match series, having won the first two tests. It would be a very tough test match again. I mean, we certainly haven't had everything our own way in the first two tests. We've had to dig pretty deep. Um, and we've got to expect very similar here this week. Many Midlands cricketers will be key to this game, not least the bowling of Nottinghamshire's Stuart Broad, who will need to contain the dangerous Indian batsman. And it marks the first international match at the redeveloped Edgebaston, a game 18 months in the making. Well, football and the first competitive Nottingham derby for almost 20 years kicks off in just over an hour. Nottingham Forest hosts Notts County in the first round of the Carling Cup, and it's a game that most fans want to win more than any other. For Steve McLaren, one of the most important games for many fans has landed just one game into his tenure. Forest versus County means more to the fans than just the start of a cup run. Very hard game. All derbies very tough, but Martin Allen will certainly have them organised up for the fight. And um, yeah, it could be a, a right old battle. We expect that. And uh, I've seen them against Carlisle, seen them against Wolves. Very good team. This is not going to be an easy game for us. Forest might have the more illustrious history, but the head-to-head -head shows there's not much between the sides. Forest have 39 wins to County's 30. 
The last time they played each other in 1994, County were home victors. They've only ever met once before in the League Cup. Forrest dished out a hefty 4-0 thumping then. But Notts County will be no pushover. They might play their football in a league lower than their near neighbours. But last year they held the multi-millionaires of Manchester City to a draw in the FA Cup. They even looked like winning at one stage. Tonight they'll hope to show they've still got some cup magic. Meanwhile, Steve McLaren will be desperate for a win knowing this game, more than any other, can make him an instant hero or a villain at the city ground. We've got a total of 13 teams in the Carling Cup tonight, so good luck to uh, all of them. And some sports news that's come into us while we've been on air. Stoke have signed uh, Matthew Upson, the former West Ham and uh, Birmingham City defender, on a two-year deal. Now, the uh, rioting, which is uh, spreading across the country, of course, will dominate the ITV News at 6.30. So let's join Mark Austin to see what's coming up. Coming up at 6.30, the very latest on the riots across the UK, the wreckage and devastation of a night of mindless violence in the capital and beyond. Fighting back, thousands more police are drafted in as they attempt to reclaim the streets from the rioters. And the Prime Minister's warning to young thugs, if you're old enough to commit crime, you're old enough to take the punishment. That and much more at 6.30. Well, for more now on the trouble in the Midlands, we can join Bob and Sam in Birmingham City Centre, close to where the trouble began. Steve, thank you. And we've been getting lots of comments about the looters on our Facebook and Twitter sites. We'll start with Summer Monday, who says that this needs to stop now. They're giving teens a bad name and they're hurting people who don't deserve it. Angela Mason says she thinks all those who've been arrested should be made to clean up the mess and national service should be brought back. Meanwhile, Jackie Anderson says gather them up, put them on a plane. Guys, some quiet, please. Thank you. Gather them up, put them on a plane and drop them in the center of Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah. Jackie Graham says, I'm so proud of those pulling together within the community, showing true heart and coming out to clean up this mess. And Andrew Griffith says that rubber bullets, water cannons, tear gas, batons, the army, they should all be used. But the government don't have the balls to make the decision. Failing that, round them up and ship them to Afghanistan. Seems to be the popular destination <laughs> on the front line and see how brave they are there. And Dominic Bill tweeted to say they have no respect, no integrity and no backbone. Well, earlier today, I walked through Birmingham city centre as shops began to put up their boards and shutters. And it was clear that this is a city which is frankly frightened. It's frightened of further violence and more disorder. And that fear is reflected in towns and cities across the region. And as we see with these images of trouble in West Bromwich today, many people will be wondering what will happen next. They're holding their breath. They're hoping that their community will be safe this evening and avoid scenes like this. Well, indeed. Thank you for watching. And we will, of course, have more in our late bulletin at 10.30. But from Sam and from me for now, good night.